Racer is one of three classic wooden roller coasters at Kennywood. For many enthusiasts, this is the least impressive of the three. It does not have the crushing laterals of Thunderbolt, nor the wild double down of Jackrabbit. But this is a fun ride with some underrated forces, and most importantly, it has the racing aspect. I think it's the best wooden racing coaster in the United States. I will explain why in this review. The first coaster named Racer opened at Kennywood in 1910. This was a side friction roller coaster with two tracks designed by John Miller. While it was the world's largest racing coaster at the time, the lack of upstop wheels meant the ride had gentler drops and limited negative Gs. The ride closed in 1926 and was replaced by Kitty Land. A second racer opened in 1927. This is the one we know today. This dual track ride was also designed by John Miller, and like the adjacent Jackrabbit, this ride had upstop wheels, meaning it could have a wilder layout than before. But Kennywood wanted the ride to remain family friendly, and I think they hit the mark. This ride is not too large or intimidating for kids, but it has enough appeal to older riders between the nostalgia, racing element, and drops. Unlike some racing coasters like Hershey Park's Lightning Racer that have two distinct, independent tracks, Racer is connected with one continuous track. This makes it a rare Mobius coaster. If you dispatch on the right, you return to the station on the left, and vice versa. The train then returns to its original position after a second lap. So each guest experiences roughly 2,250 feet, or 700 meters of track per ride. But the train needs to navigate a full 4,500 feet, or 1,400 meters to complete the full circuit. This is why many enthusiasts consider this ride one single credit, unlike other dueling coasters out there. I love this ride's distinctive appearance. The classic station is a work of art. The park actually changed this in the 1960s, but it was restored to the original look in 1990. It has old-style architecture and bears the ride's name in big letters. Then the wood has a reddish appearance, which stands out compared to the usual white or more mundane brown of other wood coasters. As nice as this ride looks, it is not in the best location for photos. While Kennywood's other wood coasters travel down the ravine, Racer is placed at the edge of it. You can get some decent shots of the first half from the picnic pavilion, but any other view is obstructed by large fencing, steel curtain, or Racer's very own support structure. This ride draws solid crowds. It is popular with locals. Now the ride doesn't have a ton of queue space, so a full queue takes just 30 minutes. Most weekdays, I wait closer to 15 to 20 minutes. The park has three trains. They'll have one operating on each side. To my knowledge, they have never operated this coaster with one train because that would defeat a main selling point of the ride. The third train is used as a spare. Two trains are loaded and dispatched in tandem. The trains are from PTC and they're comprised of four three bench cars. So each train holds a max of 24 riders per cycle and 48 riders total experience racer at a time. The restraint check is pretty quick, but the load procedure can sometimes take a bit. Both trains load at the same time from a central platform. There are no air gates, so 48 riders are admitted at once. Seating is then on a first come basis. You can choose any open seat in either train. Some people know exactly where they want to sit. Others do not. Then you may have a situation where a group cannot all sit together, especially if you're one of the last people let onto the platform. Some are fine being on different trains or rows, but others ask people to move or go back into the queue line. When this happens, the employees need to get another group. Then the unload procedure is a bit cumbersome due to the station setup. You exit on the outside of the trains. If you had any loose articles, those are placed in the interior platform where you board. So you then need to go back on the load platform and then cross back over the train. Kennywood will not let the next riders onto the platform until everyone from the prior cycle has gone down the exit ramp. If there is a lengthy wait, this coaster is included in the park's paid speedy pass skip the line system. You can either purchase single shots or it is included on the all day options. This usually gets you onto the next train. 
SpeedyPass users also have a major advantage when it comes to seat selection because they typically are admitted onto the load platform before anyone from the regular line. The back car is far and away the best spot in this ride. There are some nice airtime moments there. You don't get those in the other cars to the same extent. If you see the back cars are already occupied, you can let people pass you in the queue. Most guests are more than happy to board faster. But once you step onto the load platform, you usually need to pick a seat and cannot wait for the next train unless you're in one of those situations where your group got split up. Fortunately, a lot of guests seem to fill the ride front to back, and it helps that there are two trains, meaning there are six possible rows between the two back cars of each cycle. Another seating tip is that you want to be in the outside seats, relative to the load platform. These seats run next to the opposing train in the turnarounds, meaning you can slap hands with the guests in the other train. It is a neat quirk you do not get on most rides. Riders are restrained by individual seat belts. Then each row is a shared buzz bar. This is a single position lap bar that rests a foot above the lap of most riders, offering plenty of space to experience negative G's. Once both sides are checked, a bell goes off, and then you round a corner and ascend the 73 foot or 22 meter tall lift hill. At the top, you have one of the best no standing signs ever. It bluntly says, don't stand up, and it has skulls with crossbones right next to it. The first drop is much smaller than the lift hill, but it still offers a decent pop of airtime in the back car. You then rise into the first turnaround. Those in the front car will lightly lift out of their seat. The turn itself is slow, but it is scenic. You can look down the ravine at Jackrabbit, or you can admire the convoluted mess known as Steel Curtain next door, and you pass by the other train, allowing you to slap hands with the other train. You can also interact with the other riders. There's usually a lot of energy between the two trains. The right side will always pull ahead here because the train is on the inside of the turn. The drop off this turnaround offers some weak air time in the back car, but it's noticeably better in the very back row. This is the only drop on the ride where one specific row is noticeably better. Next comes a camelback. In it's weirdly profiled. There's an unbanked turn right leading into it. Then there's an unbanked turn left exiting it. Those in front get good laterals entering the element and a pinch of air time. And the exit offers some laterals as well. But it's way better in the back row. The descent offers great floater air time. You really lift out of your seat. Then the laterals are strong as well. Especially because you're still airborne as they kick in. You then rise into turn around 2, which is above the station. It offers another weak pop in the front row. The trains are usually too far apart here to slap hands on this turn. The left side is on the inside though, so they'll make up some ground at least. The drop off this turn around offers a weak pop of air time for those in the back. Then comes another bunny hill, which has the same unbanked entrance and exit as the first camelback. There's no air time but the front gets good laterals coming in and out of it. Then those in back also miss out on negative Gs, but the exit delivers a great burst of laterals. Next comes the third and final turnaround. This is the best part of the ride for several reasons. One, the front gets a decent pop of airtime in the entry. Two, the turn itself is exciting. Everyone gets solid laterals. It is unbanked like the first two, but you have more speed this time. The trains are then side by side once again, allowing for more hand slapping and heckling. Then the left side is on the inside once again, so it has a chance to overtake the opposing train. It always makes for an exciting finish. 3. The drop off the turnaround is fantastic. It is the best drop on the ride. The apex is so sharp that even those in the front car get a little bit of air time. Meanwhile, those in the back car get good ejector air time especially because you have just those buzz bars. It is quite shocking compared to what the other hills offer. You then have a section of straight track, but you are speeding alongside the other train, so it's still engaging even if the track isn't doing anything. You then jump into the final brake run, and those in the front get one last teeny burst of airtime. 
you then roll back into the station, ending on the opposite side from which you started. This ends the experience. Racer is not the fastest coaster out there. It has a max speed of just 40 miles per hour or 64 kilometers per hour, making it the park's slowest wooden coaster, but the pacing is solid because of the fun dips, smattering of laterals, and interactions with the other train. The second turn is the one part that doesn't have too much going for it because of how far the trains are apart. For a ride that's nearly 100 years old, this coaster is very smooth. It tracks incredibly well in all rows. It doesn't matter if you're riding on a wheel seat or not with this ride. Kennywood has its own team of carpenters, and they know how to maintain a wood coaster. This past off-season, they just replaced the ride's lift hill. So, what would I rate the racer? I would give this classic wood coaster a 7 out of 10. This is a good ride. I love the racing element. It is a cool visual running alongside the other train, and you have the opportunity to interact with the other riders between the hand slapping and banter. Then this ride has a nice series of drops in the back car, with two drops in particular offering great airtime. Then there are some transitions giving nice laterals. This is not the most intense ride out there, but it's just pure fun. I think it's the best wooden racing coaster in the United States between the engagement and elements. I even have it ahead of the much more modern lightning racer on the other side of the state. There are some better racing coasters made of steel in the United States, and I would take a few foreign racing wood coasters over this one, but Racer is still an impressive ride considering its age. I have Racer as the second best wood coaster at Kennywood. Thunderbolt is my favorite of the trio. Jackrab is the best single moment with a double down, but I prefer the more well-rounded experience of Racer. So those are my thoughts on Racer at Kennywood. What are your thoughts about this ride? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.